In this video we are going to dive once more into Deathwatch list building and what to look out for as a beginner. First we will start with a quick overview on the types of lists I am featuring on this channel and how I rate their risk to reward ratio. Then we will focus on beginners lists and what to consider when compared to competitive lists that are being successfully played at tournaments. This is a follow up to my popular beginner's guide to 2000 points tied to a request by one of my viewers to compare such a beginner's list with the tournament ones. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temmer and I will be guiding you through this video. Starting with the different list types featured on my channel, I would personally categorize them as following. First, we have what I refer to as the competitive lists. These are the ones played at tournaments and similar style of events. I usually cover these when discussing tournament results. From a beginner's perspective, I would rate them as high risk, high reward style of lists. These lists usually feature a combination of the strong faction specific elements, are incredibly points optimized and tailored to deal with the predicted event meta and other conditions such as terrain for example. These lists are built to win and as such it is very tempting to simply copy them. However, from a beginner's perspective, a word of caution here, I rate them as high risk because of the mentioned tailoring in addition to their potential potentially short lifespan. 9th edition progresses at an impressive rate, codexes and FAQs keep coming out, the meta changes and it is very likely that by the time you have assembled such a list it will already be outdated. Next we have what I refer to as the experimental lists. This is a combination of what I experiment with and what I have seen competitive players experiment with, but what has not necessarily established itself as tournament level picks and perhaps never will. However, I am making a point to only include elements that I think have a good chance of success and that don't drastically alter an established list. For instance, I would not recommend bringing a 400 points forward model as part of such an experiment. However, what I would recommend in such a list is running certain models outside of a kill team, for instance in scepters or eliminators, or changing the loadouts of certain units, for instance from power swords to power axes on veteran bikers, tied to the recommendation to magnetize them in the first place. As such, I rate these style of lists as medium risk, medium reward. At the worst, the changes won't work out, but it also won't leave you with models that you cannot use at all. Third, we have beginner's lists, the ones most relevant in this particular context, which I would rate as low to medium risk, medium reward. My main goal with these is to provide a solid all-rounder style of lists that give a general direction without running a huge risk of those models being obsolete by the time you actually start to play with them. As I mentioned in the beginner's guide to 2000 points, being able to play the mission, picking secondaries, making use of the Deathwatch specific toolset, being relevant in every phase of the game, having access to utility, some mobility as well as a variety of units that speed up getting familiar with 9th edition and the game in general are all elements I consider relevant for such a list, but I also try to make sure that each of the models in the list are recyclable for future iterations. Perhaps overly bold goals that certainly have an impact on overall efficiency, but from a beginner's perspective, I think that getting into the hobby smoothly is more important than always playing the latest tournament winning list. Which brings us to the fourth and final type of list for now, the thematic lists. I rate these as low risk and low to medium reward. 
Basically, what I am talking about here is placing certain artificial army restrictions, such as only taking firstborns or only taking primaries. Some people just like to play a fluffy army in a beer hammer kind of environment or for crusades. When I did my double episode on firstborn and primaries only army lists, I also included some pros and cons for these particular type of lists. Anyway, I consider these low risk because the choice of models is heavily influenced by personal preference and the reward can be low to medium for Deathwatch lists at least, mainly thanks to our firstborn Deathwatch veterans being better than ever, easily keeping up with the power creep of some of the more recently introduced primaries models. With the list types out of the way, moving on to focus on the direct comparison between my beginner's list and tournament lists. First of all, I'm going to start this off with what I consider nopes for a beginner's list. Things I generally do not recommend are too many of the same datasheet, overperforming units that are in high risk of receiving a nerf that makes them drop out of fashion again, as well as difficult to get models and or loadouts. A prominent example, if not to say THE currently most prominent example, is the 5 Dreadnought tournament lists that has risen to immense popularity with John Lennon's Onslaught GT win after Jack Harpster already scored a very respectable rank 11 at the ACO. It is a brutally efficient list, it does death watch well, but I would not advise to go for it as a beginner unless you are heavily into dreadnoughts and wanted to play at least 4 to 5 of them anyway. Why would I advise against it? Simple, you are going to sink the majority of your points and money into the same datasheets. When I think that Redemptors are fantastic, I include one in my beginners list, I wouldn't even argue against two of them, but do you really want to build and paint three of them? The two Volkite contenders are even worse. Forge World model, the weapons have been sold out for weeks. From a beginner's perspective, do you want to wait for weeks until they come back in stock? Do you want to deal with having to order from third party vendors, all while risking that they get fact and the top players will drop them before you even got started? Don't get me wrong, it's a great list, but as it currently stands, it is hardly beginner friendly. Same issue with all the shotguns or the lists with 10 to 15 cyclone missile launchers on the terminators. In a recent video, I covered the relevant boxes for building the competitive Proteus kill team. The link to the video is in the description. In short, some of the popular loadouts are difficult to get through box purchases alone. To efficiently get them in bulk, you need access to a bits vendor or even third parties. Again, from a beginner's perspective, this is perhaps not the best way to get started. Not to mention that building and painting up 15 identical terminators is pretty bleak. With the nopes out of the way, what would I recommend for a beginner's list that does not necessarily align with tournament lists? My top 3 among these are certainly a balanced amount of datasheets, new releases and a focus on kill teams. This means not focusing on too many of the same models, like 3 Redemptors or 6 near identical Proteus kill teams, factoring in kits that got recently released, such as the Primaris Indomitus line, and prioritizing kill teams over regular squads, because in the end, that's the unique trademark of the Death Watch. Having said that, my goal is still to aim for a list as efficient as possible. As far as I'm concerned, beginner's list does not equal bad list, it just means that it's not as tailored as what you would find in tournament settings. With these general guidelines out of the way, I will conclude this second part with going quickly through my choices for the two variants of the beginner's list and commenting on whether they see tournament play or not, and in case of the latter, why I would bring them anyway. For HQs, I included a Captain, a Librarian, as well as a Primaris Chaplain on bike. Both the Captain and the Librarian are commonly seen at tournaments and the relics and traits align with that. 
The exact version to pick here is of secondary importance and there are multiple competitive variants. The important part is having these two specific HQs. The Chaplin is less commonly seen, though I would personally consider him a fantastic force multiplier. Out of the three, I label him as my third choice though, so if you wanted to use the points elsewhere, this is the one to draw. Moving on to the troops, from a tournament's perspective, this section is currently heavily dominated by the Proteus kill teams. In my second variant of the list, I have included both the Proteus infantry bikes variant, as well as one with five Vanguard veterans, both of which we still commonly see at tournaments. However, in the first variant, I go a Primaris heavy route with the Spectrus, Fortis and Indometer kill teams. The Fortis kill team without riders is something we also frequently see at tournaments, though sometimes with 5 outriders, but I think that the 4 outriders with a single intercessor keeping the infantry keyword is making far better use of the Deathwatch toolset. That aside, both the Indometer as well as the Spectrus kill team seem to have fallen a bit out of fashion in tournament lists as of late. For the Indometer, I think the reason is that people have mostly tried the initially hyped Eradicators in the Kill Team combo, which turned out to be less optimal when compared to simply using a separate squad together with the Teleportarium stratagem. Additionally, Plasma and Zepters have gone up in price, and Indometer Kill Teams with 5 Plasma and Zepters have become brutally expensive as a result. Nonetheless, the kind of Indometer Kill team I recommend is mixing in both Inceptors as well as Aggressors, a combo that I have not seen at tournaments outside of the East China Open, where it has certainly proven its efficiency. As far as the Spectre skill team is concerned, tournament lists seem to have shifted towards running regular Eliminator squads. Personally, I think it's fantastic in combination with the Indometer kill team and really helps to establish some early board control, though I could totally see using a separate squad of infiltrators or incursors and eliminators instead. The important part here is that both variants make good use of the same models, which is exactly what I want from a beginner's list. Moving on to the elites, this section is usually heavily dominated by dreadnoughts and turn and occasionally by the chief apothecary. I've included one of each, but I also favor company veterans, bladeguard veterans as well as a judiciar. As far as company veterans is concerned, I'm not sure why they are not that popular in tournament lists anymore. I think they are fantastic for reasons I covered in a full video dedicated to them. The link is in the description. It might have to do with the fact that these lists just cannot spare the points. Bladeguard veterans haven't popped up at tournaments in a while, up until the recent Lone Star Open, where a list with them ended up on rank 17, the third best Space Marine result. While they might arguably work better in more close combat oriented chapters, I just think it's an easy to play, points efficient unit that fits well into any beginner's list. Furthermore, we have the Judicier, which is a bit of a more experimental pick. It combines well with with the mixed units kind of Indometer kill team, which might be the reason that we haven't seen him much elsewhere. Then lastly, in the second variant of the list we also have a squad of Eradicators. This one has seen plenty of tournament play as of late. All in all, the major difference between my take on the beginners list and successful tournament lists is that the latter are heavily invested into single datasheets and kill teams, something which I advise against when building up your first 2k Deathwatch army due to high risk of ending up with obsolete models and or getting burned out by having to build and paint up tons of copies of the same models. On the other hand, the models I suggested are strong picks on their own and the large majority of them do find their way into competitive lists frequently, but in some cases in a different kind of combination. The important part here is that you can keep playing with these same models even when you change your list later and expand your army further. When freshly getting into the hobby and racking up those initial games, as far as I'm concerned, a hyper-focus 
use of the competitive meta list is not required, as you will be busy enough familiarizing yourself with both the rules and the arm you play. On top of that, I also strongly believe that you don't want to end up with obsolete models too soon, and for this purpose, I aim to walk that thin line between getting and keeping good units early on, yet still keeping it beginner friendly. To wrap things up, over the course of the video, we have looked at four types of lists featured on this channel and how they compare to each other in terms of risk to reward ratio. We then focused on two types of lists, beginner and competitive, in a direct comparison. Getting started with a few notes as well as general recommendations for beginners lists, I highlighted the risks of investing into too many of the same data sheets and duplicate models in 9th edition when getting freshly started. Furthermore, I compared the picks of my two beginners lists with what is being played at tournaments and where they differ. All in all, the large majority of the models themselves align, with the competitive lists being more focused on more of the same, such as the ever popular dreadnoughts and or the Proteus skill teams. As a closing thought for this particular topic, I think what is really important as a beginner is to get into the hobby smoothly and to stay motivated while building up, painting and playing an army. Having models available that you actually like can go a long way, far more than playing catch up with the latest meta trends. Over time, as your army ever increases in size, having the competitiveness of an individual datasheet change over the course of FAQs and editions has less of an impact as you will have plenty of spare models to swap out. So that's it for another take on Deathwatch list building and what to look out for as a beginner. For the more veteran players, have you guys any further recommendations? Any newcomers that want to share would really help them in order to get started? Have I overlooked anything important? Let me know in the comments. Finally, I would also like to mention that there is a Swiss Hammer Facebook page where I will be posting links to my videos as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. I look forward to seeing you there as well. I do also have a Patreon page. If you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated as it helps me invest into future videos. As always, thank you very much for watching guys, your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.